All right, are the Dallas Cowboys going to increase their free agency participation <laughs> whatsoever? Because today at 11 o'clock, it officially begins. And Calvin, what? It's spring break, Sean. <laughs> They're not going to be doing anything this week. <laughs> are you kidding me? You should know better. How long has this been? 11, 12, 13 years? <laughs> That's right. You know better than that. You yeah. know better than going to be doing anything today. Calvin Watkins over the weekend reports that the boys have given Michael Gallup permission to seek a trade. This situation is tough because teams expect Gallup to be released. So yesterday or the last two weeks, I should say, Bobby, as our Cowboys insider, when we're trying to figure out Michael Gelk in Dallas Morning News saying, ah, oh, they're making a... They're making a tough call here. They don't know what to do with Michael Gallup. Was that a little bit of a negotiation publicly? Was that a little bit of a smoke screen to try to increase his value? Michael Gallup can go and work out a deal if he wants. <laughs> I think they want him to take... I think they would want him back on a pay cut. And so I think that that's probably the indication that you're receiving here is they don't want to take one. His 2024 salary, eight and a half million. Of that amount, four million is guaranteed for injury. It becomes fully guaranteed on March 18th. He's in the third year of a five for five uh, for 57 and a half million dollar deal. Fantastic contract. Let's add that to the list of negotiations the Cowboys have won. Uh, if you look uh -huh. at the the eight, they probably want him to play around what he's currently guaranteed for, which is four. I would guess. And so if they are, because I, I think they definitely wanted him back. They wanted him back on a reduced deal. But yeah, if it was going to be the full hit, they're not going to want to play with that. So that to me says that Gallup doesn't have interest in taking a pay cut, doesn't want to sacrifice that money, wants to make them, you know, make a move on it, either do something, trade him, whatever else. I think it's funny to use that language that he's free to seek a trade. It's like, well, I'm free to seek, you know, a $10 million contract somewhere. I'm not getting that. Right. Like, and so free to seek a trade. I don't know what team. And when the reports are out there, like, man, teams think he's going to get cut. So no, it's that no team wants to take on that money. Nobody right. wants to pay him that. And he wants to force somebody's hand to make them make the decision. And so that's fine. They'll make the decision. They'll, they'll probably cut him here in a couple weeks if they're in a week, if that's the case. And Who's his sponsor on. in the building? Like who, um, is it McCarthy that likes him? Uh, wants him back? Likes him or likes him as a player? Likes him, it's everybody. Everybody loves Michael Gallup. They think he's, you know, one of the sweetest guys in the locker room. He's a great down-to-earth guy. He's, he's friendly. He's nice. Everybody likes those things. I think it's probably just... I, I mean, you got to think about all the roster turnover they've had over the last couple of years. Like, Gallup is one of the originals for Dak. Like that's, I, I would imagine Dak is somebody who's been a sponsor of his, and I know McCarthy likes him. McCarthy feels like they didn't get him involved enough last year. Right. Yeah. No. He's, he he said that to us. You know, and I was I, I saw some people post like prime, you know, pre-injury Michael Gallup videos. I was like, all right, you know, he was he was speedy. Like he had some. He had some kick to him. Oh, he was he could go up, he could, you know, get contested catches. He was a he was pretty much a vertical threat only, but I mean he could he was really good at, you know, high pointing footballs, making catches, toe tap on the sideline. All that was really great. As soon as he loses the confidence in that knee, going up for a ball like he did, he's once that confidence is gone, what he gives you as a threat is gone. You know, you have something in your house and you got a great deal on it but you don't really use it, but you don't want to put it on the curb. I'm like that. I'm like, no, I got a great deal. We have to utilize this. That's how they may be looking at his contract because he's making 11 a year. Yeah, you're not going to find many. I mean, you're I about to pay CD Lamb 30 a year yeah. and you're like, okay, if we could, you know, maybe he doesn't, if, if he's our two, it's a dream. If we could just make him our three at 11 a year, we have an absolute steal here. With an eight and a half million dollar salary, that is amazing on the wide receiver market. If we could get him as a two, that was the initial plan. That's not going to happen. You get him as a three at eleven a year. It's like that thing you don't want to throw out that you right. got that you got on clearance. I, I mean, it really is because they got ahead of his deal, but uh -huh. it really didn't feel like they had to pay him. And I was like, oh, you kind of gave him an early deal, like a Jalen Smith type deal. And this is where we are. Here, here are the three directly in front of him and directly behind him in contract value in the NFL. In front of him, Cortland Sutton, Odell Beckham Jr., DeAndre Hopkins. Directly behind him, Jacoby Myers, Alan Lazard, and Michael Thomas. Oh. 
So he's in that. He's. I mean, I don't know. Like, I'd have to look and see what Lazard did. But off the top of my head, I would want all of those guys off of over Gallup. So the Cowboys have roughly a week to act. Trading him would dump the salary. It would also trigger a dead cap charge of thirteen million. Zach Martin flipping some switches, of course, on Friday, saving them about thirteen million. If you cut him post June one, that would result in a four million dollar cap hit. In 2024, 8.7 million in 2025. So he caught 34 passes for 418 and two touchdowns last season. He has not put up more than 445 receiving yards in a single year since 2020. Wow. Yeah. He he was there was a point it it had improved by the end of the year. I think Devontae Parker was last in the NFL, but there was a point midway through last year where Michael Gallup had the fewest yards per route run in the NFL. Like he was the least efficient receiver in the NFL for how often he was out there running routes. So, so. Uh, wait, so like his yard, his average yards were run, like his average, that means like he runs like a two yard route? No, no, like his receiving yards per route run, like you take the number of routes he's run, oh. divide his receiving yards by, it was like 0.8 yards per route run or something. It was by far the worst in the NFL. He just wasn't being used. Jeremy Fowler, ESPN, says Derrick Henry is expected to join another team in free agency. And his former teammate, offensive lineman Taylor Lewan, who has his barstool, Bustin' with the Boys, very popular podcast, he talked about Derrick Henry and why he needs to come here. The thing that Derrick is not his favorite thing to do is zone read. Like, he doesn't like turning his shoulders away from the line of scrimmage. He likes to get downhill. He likes the outside zone, the duos, the doses, the inside zone type stuff. So any kind of RPO is kind of tough. And I feel like Buffalo utilizing Josh Allen has more of a difficult time just doing some downhill run game type stuff. Under center, blah, 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 blah. Um, but yeah, Dallas is one of them for me. First off, guy lives in Dallas in the offseason. He, having to start, even if you're an Eagles fan, even if you're a Redskins fan or Commanders fan or a Giants fan, Wearing the star in your head is one of the coolest things you can do as a football player. That brand that Jerry Jones has created is mo one of the most incredible things ever. But Tony Pollard, did, I don't know if he had a great year or, or whatever, but getting Dak Prescott opportunities to just hand the ball off once in a while and not put so much pressure on him automatically puts that team into the discussion they're always in in week eight and week nine of the season. Week eight, nine of the season, we got Dak as an MVP. We got Cowboys winning the Super Bowl, this, that, and the other. They have a great football team. I don't think McCarthy's a guy there. They should put Mike Vrabel there, but that's a conversation for a different time. Yeah, he's gonna he's gonna back up his guy Vrabel there at the very end. But overall, yeah, took that little side shot. <laughs> look, the uh, how much money? That that's what it comes down to. If, if well, Derek... first let's focus on the running style. What he started off that clip with, right? How that would work here as opposed to other places who are gonna ask for that different scheme. And he brought up Buffalo. Like if you're running that Philadelphia, you know, RPO type stuff. That's not going to work for Derek and his preference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, honestly, like, we don't see a lot, Dallas run a whole lot of that. Like, that's been something that when Dak runs, it's got to be something where, like, Dak is a threat with his legs. is not on read option stuff, typically. It's breaking the pocket yeah. or just making a decision to run after, you know, a couple seconds. Like, okay, this is taken up or I've got this ability to do this. It's not with zone read stuff. So, I, that, I, I totally can see that. If that's something he's not comfortable with, that that would make sense here. The... The Cowboys want a more physical running back presence than they had last year. That is a big focus for them this offseason. We try to figure out, like, okay, what are the markers they're looking for? What are the different things that they're trying to check off on their roster? That's one of them. They feel like they they lost something with Zeke in that that area, that they want somebody who can be a power back for them, and that's something that Derrick Henry can absolutely do. It's going to be their speed back. I mean, Tony Pollard, right? <laughs> they'll they'll, they'll, uh, they'll pay him whatever to, to keep him back. Honestly, what I would guess is if they go out and sign Derrick Henry, they will go draft somebody to be the speed back. They'll, they'll find mm. – the, they will get in the draft whatever they don't get in free agency. So if they get a speed back in free agency, they'll go draft the power back or whatever else. But they want the, the coupling there. Grim Reaper? Running back Reaper? Let's kill it. I, yeah, I, I I mean, what's his cost going to be? That that's the number one thing for me. Um, he just bought a new house in Dallas. He's gonna he's gonna need plenty of money to pay for that. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, guys like that. I mean, what what do veterans do? They have two things that going for them or not going for them. They got age, and they have a name. And names generally are more expensive. And that's that's the problem. Like you know, to me with running backs, it's like just find me somebody young, give me fresh legs, fresh legs, man. And uh, you know, he's thirty. 
I mean, 30 is is old for a non-quarterback. Could you imagine what it is for a running back? So it's a, he's he has had a heavy workload yeah. like throughout his career. Like I'm I was I wanted to look this up right now. We all feel like Zeke ran the ball a ton. He has about the same amount of carries as Zeke has had, and that's missing eight games one year. Last year, he had 1,167 yards in 17 games, 4.2 a carry. Yeah, and that's a stark drop from his, like, prime, where he was, like, five and a half a carry at times. He had mm-hmm. 5.1. One year, he had 5.4 for 2,000. Yeah, that was that was the year that was, what was that, 2019? That was the year they went to the AFC Championship game. They were great that year. Look, you want to be cheap? You want to take a Russ-type deal? Fine. I'm all in, and then you draft yeah. a speedster. Yeah, be cheap. If you, if you could go fine. play vet minimum, or not, he won't do that, but just, we we, we all would take Henry over Barkley, though, right? Yes, absolutely. I would. Right now? Yes. Injure. I don't trust Saquon. Barkley's just never healthy. Yeah. And even when, the, when he's healthy, it feels like everything with Barkley is one, one, two, no, 50, like when he's right. healthy.